A soft field takeoff and climb is an essential skill that pilots must learn to be able to safely depart off runways with unpaved surfaces, such as grass or dirt. Pilots should routinely practice and develop proficiency in conducting soft field takeoffs and climbs properly in the event one is needed to be performed. It is important for pilots to understand the environmental factors and aerodynamics involved in taking off from an unpaved surface, the same way they would for a regular airport runway. Soft field takeoffs and climbs are used in many commercial flight operations, as well as in general aviation. Prior to leaving the airport, the pilot must consult the pilot's operating handbook to ensure they are familiar with the aircraft configuration for soft field takeoffs. In Epic Flight Academy Cessna 172 Skyhawks, when taking off from airports with a pressure altitude above 3,000 feet, the pilot must lean the mixture to ensure maximum RPMs can be achieved during takeoff. The pilot must complete the before takeoff checklist and set the flaps to 10 degrees, then confirm that both flaps are down equally. Next, the pilot visually checks for traffic on final for the active runway and for other traffic approaching within the traffic pattern. Pilots must visually look at the windsock to obtain the latest information about the wind prior to takeoff, ensuring they remain wind conscious. The pilot then makes the appropriate traffic advisory calls, notifying nearby traffic of their intentions. At a controlled airport, the pilot must read back the takeoff clearance given to them. As the pilot prepares to begin their taxi onto the runway, they bring their control wheel all the way back, which raises the elevator. This allows the pilot to put the weight of the aircraft on the main landing gear and less weight on the nose gear. The reason this is done is to keep the nose wheel from bouncing down the unpaved runway, as these runways are generally not as level as a paved runway, which prevents the propeller from potentially striking the ground if a large bump is encountered while taxiing and taking off. When simulating soft field takeoffs on paved runways, the pilot should apply full back elevator pressure just before crossing the hold short line leading to the runway, simulating being on an unpaved runway and keeping the nose wheel light. The pilot taxis the aircraft into position using minimal to no brakes to allow the aircraft to maintain momentum. Note, higher RPM settings will be necessary to make the airplane move forward while on grass or unpaved runways. The brakes should not be reapplied unless an aborted takeoff is necessary. The pilot then centers the nose of the aircraft down the runway to provide a straight ground roll down the soft field runway. When simulating a soft field takeoff on a paved runway, ensure the nose gear is centered on the runway center line. Position the flight controls for the existing wind conditions and verify that the HSI heading and the magnetic compass heading approximately match the runway heading to confirm they are on the proper runway. While maintaining back elevator pressure, the pilot smoothly advances the throttle to full power and calls out, full power. As the aircraft begins to generate more thrust and travel down the runway, the pilot needs to alleviate some of the back elevator pressure to prevent the aircraft's nose from lifting excessively. This also will assist with the aircraft rotating at the appropriate speed based on their aircraft's weight. During takeoff, the nose of the aircraft will be raised, limiting forward visibility. The pilot's eye should transition to the left between the window post and instrument panel to allow the pilot to adjust and remain aligned with the center of the runway. Then they check that the engine is producing at least 2300 RPMs and that the engine instruments are in the green. The pilot then calls out 2300 RPMs, engine instruments in the green. Remember to always keep a hand on the throttle in the event an aborted takeoff becomes necessary. As the aircraft rolls down the runway, the pilot checks their airspeed tape and announces airspeed alive as it begins to indicate an increase in airspeed. As the aircraft's airspeed approaches 51 knots indicated airspeed or the specified rotation speed based on the aircraft's takeoff weight, the aircraft will depart the ground and enter ground effect. When on unpaved runways, the pilot can note this occurring when they feel the bumps from rolling down the runway stop. This indicates that the aircraft's main landing gear has left the ground. Note, if the aircraft weighs less than the maximum takeoff weight, pilots should refer to their pilot's operating handbook for rotation speed based on their total weight. Lighter aircraft will take off at slower speeds. The pilot then announces rotate and maintains the necessary back elevator pressure to depart the runway surface. Now, as the plane climbs into ground effect, the pilot lowers the nose to a level flight attitude to keep the plane in ground effect. 
This allows the aircraft to accelerate with minimal induced drag, which creates more lift. The aircraft will begin to climb out of ground effect. If there is no obstacle to clear at the departure end of the runway, the pilot should establish a VY pitch attitude, roughly 10 degrees nose high. And once the aircraft's airspeed is above 60 knots indicated airspeed, has a positive rate of climb, and is at a safe altitude, the pilot announces positive rate flaps up and retracts the flaps and continues to climb out at VY. If there is an obstacle to clear at the departure end of the runway, the pilot should establish a 56 knots indicated airspeed climb attitude, roughly 13 degrees nose high. Maintain 56 knots indicated airspeed until the aircraft is clear of the obstacle, and then pitch for VY. Once above 60 knots indicated airspeed, with a positive rate of climb, the pilot calls out, positive rate flaps up, and retracts the flaps. Note, at Epic Flight Academy, students and instructors simulate an obstacle height of 200 feet AGL, unless otherwise instructed. After the short field takeoff and climb is completed, the pilot should run the climb checklist to ensure the aircraft is configured properly. Some helpful tips when conducting soft field takeoffs and climbs are Remember that rotation speeds will vary with weight. Refer to the pilot's operating handbook to determine the appropriate rotation speed. If the aircraft wants to leave the runway, let it do so. Lower the nose right after rotation to remain in ground effect. At first, this sight picture may surprise the pilot because they will be low to the ground and in a level flight attitude. Be sure to keep the proper attitude to remain in ground effect to achieve the best acceleration while over the runway. The aircraft will begin to raise as the airspeed increases. Remember to conduct an obstacle clearance climb. Don't forget to continue to climb until the appropriate clearance altitude. This applies if simulating obstacles as well. When being evaluated by a progress check pilot or designated practical examiner, the pilot must Accelerate in ground effect to the obstacle clearance speed, or VX plus 10 or minus 5 knots until the obstacle is clear, or until at least 50 feet above the surface. Then climb at VY plus 10 or minus 5 knots. If there is no obstacle to clear, accelerate to VY plus 10 or minus 5 knots as a private pilot. Accelerate in ground effect to the obstacle clearance speed, or VX plus 5 knots until the obstacle is clear, or until at least 50 feet above the surface. Then climb at VY plus or minus 5 knots. If there is no obstacle to clear, accelerate to VY plus or minus 5 knots as a commercial pilot. Be sure to like our video and subscribe for more epic content. And while you're here, check out some of our more recent videos and playlists.